You're listening to Ramadan Radio London, live 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Also online, www. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is your brother Mufti Moinul Abu Hamza. I would like to request that all of you support a local community grassroots effort of the Merin Nisa Women's Center and the Quran Institute and Al Madad Outreach. You can find us on the Quran.institute forward slash PB. Jazakallah khair. We really hope that you can donate and provide us your support so that we can help Muslims all across this area of London for the service and khidmah to this ummah. Jazakallah khair. You're listening to Ramadan Radio London. Live 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Also online, www.ramadanradio.org. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Was salatu was salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi al-tayyibin al-tahirin Allahumma la ilma lana illa ma allamtana inna ka anta al-alim al-hakim Allahumma allimna bima yanfa'una wa anfa'na bima allamtana wa zidna ilma wa arina al-haqqa haqqan wa rizukna attiba'a wa arina al-batila batilan wa rizukna ajtinaba wa ja'alna min man yastami'una al-qawla fayattabi'una ahsanah wa adkhilna birahmatika fi ibadika al-salihin Amma bad, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all in this month of Ramadan and may we seek the maximum benefit of attaining taqwa and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our ibadah in this blessed month. My name is Moinul Abu Hamza. I teach at the Quran Institute and I was asked to speak about what it means to seek out taqwa. You see, many of us are seeking out taqwa through our ibadah. And then at some point we start seeking out Laylatul Qadr, yeah, the night of power. Because this great event in the history of creation, not just in the human history, is when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he spoke to creation. That this was the moment in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the revelation. And as a result of that, this whole month becomes blessed as a result of it. And I want to emphasize that this month is really about struggle and effort. It's really about pushing ourselves in almost this spiritual gym to develop ourselves so that we can build up the reserves, the forbearance, the mindset, and the changes that we need to see, not only in our personal and spiritual lives, but also on a social level as well. Hassan al basriu he says, Inna Allah ja'ala sawma midmaran li'ibadihi liyastabiqu ila ta'atihi. Subhanallah, he says, Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the fast a midmar. You know midmar? If you check, if you wrote that on your, with the God, if you wrote that um, on Google search right now, you'd see uh, people running in the Olympics. <laughs> People racing and preparing on a track. Subhanallah. So Hassan al-Basri is saying that indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made the fast. Yeah? He's made it, made it an arena, yeah? a stadium, a coliseum for his servants, his worshippers. To what? لِيَسْتَبِقُوا إِلَىٰ طَاعَتِهِ So that they, they race and they compete إِلَىٰ طَاعَتِهِ In his obedience, to reward his obedience. So this is really the month where, subhanAllah, this is not a month of um, replacing not eating, replacing uh, fasting during the day with glutton in the evening. But what we need to do is really understand what is the spirit of taqwa. And I would argue, and I'm making the point towards all my brothers and sisters, to really contemplate and reflect that taqwa is actually something that we need to have. Taqwa of the a westernized taqwa as well. We need to be very careful about what taqwa really means. Asking a given person on the street, what does taqwa mean? Many people will not know by the end of this month. How can you seek that which you do not know? How can you strive towards? Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum as-siyam, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum, la'allakum tattaqoon, la'allakum muttaqoon, basically. So that you become people who are muttaqis, people who are God-fearing, pious people. But yet, 
people would not know even what the definition yeah f- the definition from islam what taqwa is so what we're going to do is not just um explore the definition but the meaning and the practicalities of it inshallah so let's uh, uh, engage with taqwa so when umar ibn al-khattab radiyallahu anhu he was asked he was asked what is taqwa he described it as walking through a walking through a path that has thorns thorns and that when you are being careful fastidious cautious about those thorns harming you then that would be taqwa observing right the harms on the path think about that carefully these days we avoid the thorns that come with the path we avoid difficulty we understand that behind all and every struggle there is actually there is a benefit in it with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his rida his ridwan is there yeah he says that asa an takrahu shay'an huwa huwa khayrun lakum that perhaps you are averse to something and fight don't like something but it may it's, it's actually good for you right and so we know that even underneath every ease there is a potentiality for shukr and under every difficulty there is the potentiality of sabr yeah now even when we engage in that before we have that process take place we need to have taqwa and so that taqwa we need to be very, very careful that we don't avoid the path to avoid the thorns that people are waking up and just doing iftar missing the salah missing their obligatory prayers and in ramadan you see so much activity people fast uh, are not just fasting they are fundraising people are giving da'wah people are putting the stools out people are out there reminding people of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminding people wa tawassaw bil haqqi wa tawassaw bis sabr in joining on each other the truth and patience and forbearance and yet it's become if i would say in our community an environment where we are a relationship between the vendor and the customer where we are selling stuff and we are out there at night after the masjid looking to buy stuff sometimes praying two rak'ah sometimes praying eight rak'at and then after that sometimes ducking after six and then what we're we looking for where's that mojito right where is it that we can get bubbly tea where can we go to be seen and take photos i was walking past with my children after uh, we just left left just before witr and we were going home and we're just walking past the masjid and there was girls screaming and some guys there as well that the they only have a coffee they're having a coffee does it does one need to scream to have tasted coffee and this is the kind of you know this is if we have taqwa taqwa also extends to concern for imp- impacting allah's creatures allah's creation allah's creation is also the neighbors the neighbors are allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation and that just as we are uh, observant and fearful of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of having taqwa of him yeah we are having taqwa that we don't displease him and part of displeasing allah is harming his creation disturbing his creation right so this is something very important but you know what i've started with umar ibn al-khattab because it's a quote that many people oft remind each other of but what about the meaning now taqwa okay the meaning uh, the one that the scholars usually would uh, explain and, and and is basically to place oneself that taqwa is to place uh, uh, make effort to place something between oneself and the anger and the punishment and the consequent punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that we uh, are protecting ourselves from that which displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala okay this is taqwa and the reason why we started with that which is haram and that which what displeases Allah and that which what consequently leads to his punishment is because the nature of a muslim is that he first thinks about the transgressions before obediences that he thinks what am i doing that can anger allah subhanahu wa ta'ala am i selling alcohol while i'm fasting am i missing my prayers while uh um fasting am i handling interest while i'm fasting should i not be making meaningful steps towards un- un- uh, shackling myself from these things for indeed the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said kullu an-nas yaghdu every person goes out in the morning yeah fa ba'i an-nafsuhu 
and he is a vendor for his own soul. So every one of us, you go out in the morning, and now at night for tarawih, you are a vendor for your own soul. Either they are unshackling themselves or they are further imprisoning themselves to the dunya. So let's go out at night to not shackle ourselves further as consumerists, but actually unchain ourselves from and be free of need. You know, one of the meanings of zuhud, basic meaning of zuhud, you know, people think it means ascetic and sitting under the tree and looking like you're starving. <laughs> That's not, zuhud is indifference to the dunya over what is important to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and what is important to you. Therefore, so taqwa is observing the awamir, the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and observing the nawahi, the prohibitions and making sure that you stay away from them. It is also taking physical effort, not just that you have an aversion and an attraction towards his uh, the, the wajib, the obligations, the, but also that you have a physical effort that you t- undertake towards that which is obliged and you physically make effort to refrain. To refrain is a worship. To refrain from backbiting and lying and slandering is an effort. And therefore, we get reward for this. And ultimately, this is for the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to have his, to seek his pleasure, for him to be happy, for him, for us to be to that which he likes to see. That is the ultimate pleasure for a Muslim, for a human being that should be the ultimate aim. And for us not to be someone who is disobedient to him, someone who is transgressing his boundaries, okay, and, and therefore deserving his punishment. So this is like a really basic ex- uh, explanation because a lot of people when they say taqwa they mean piety and no one knows what that means anyway and then they say um, fearing God you've got to be scared of him and so brothers and sisters we have other words we have, we have khawf yeah, we have khawf we have khashya many many words why do we use taqwa instead of khashya alright it was this long detailed discussion of this but let's just at least go to khashya Khashya, yes, it is really the uh, is the fear uh, of the enormity of the punishment and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do to us mm-hmm. and the consequences. But do you know what? If a child doesn't have information about razor blades, then it will not have fear about razor blades, right? You leave razor blades to a child, you start playing with razor blades. And that's why knowledge leads to having fear. You can't fear that which you do not know. And as a result of that, that khawf is a factors into taqwa, but taqwa is a more broader, more broader discussion. Now, if you think about it, when people ask us, you know, not even water, you don't drink water, uh, you have to fast all day. Uh, you know, when no, our non-Muslim counterparts in our community ask us these questions, what do we say? How do we answer? How do we answer those questions? One thing I want you to remember is that although we answer in a way for da'wah, for them to understand, for we even use language sometimes we would not normally use amongst Muslims so that we can convey and be convincing. But make sure that what we understand is that fasting and iman are universal actions for human beings. They are universal. This religion, when you say as a Muslim, according to Islam, make sure you say that not... You say that for the benefit of the listener. You say that for the benefit of your non-Muslim colleague, neighbor, and counterpart. But you're not saying it because for you, you have a split personality. That you have what according to Islam and what is not according to Islam. Islam is the perfect, true interpretation and explanation of reality and and of a meaningful way to live our lives and purpose. To be a Muslim is to be a professional human being. And as a result of that, what that means is when you asked about fasting, remember that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not just put this on us. Actually, fasting is for all human beings. Now, the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, La ikraha fi deen, that there is no compulsion in religion, does not mean that really everyone around us should not be fasting and that we are the exception. No, you are the norm, even if there's one of you amongst a million, that you are actually the norm. Because when you are fasting, when you are doing sajda, you are in unison with every orbiting planet and every wavering blade of grass that is in obedience and in ta'ah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a Madani verse, 
يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم والذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون او هيومن كايند هي دينت سي يا ايها المؤمنون يا ايها الناس يا ايها الناس يا ايها الناس اعبدوا ربكم الذي خلقكم او هيومن كايند ورشيب الله Now you're going to think, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah say, oh human beings worship Allah? If you don't believe in Allah, ha- because this is an indication that Allah expects in the social life that every single person should be worshipping the one true God and following the last messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the shart, just like wudu is a condition for prayer, that you can pray all night, but without wudu, what would it benefit you? And so therefore, all the worship, all of the worship requires as something requisite to it is to have al-iman. And so really, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, obey, the first act of obedience for mankind is to have al-iman. Ya ayyuha nas, u'budullah. Rabbakum alladhi khalaqakum. Worship him. He created you all. Yeah? So we need to make sure that when we're saying according to Islam, we're saying it for the other person. Not because we ourselves uh, have a version and another version, but according to Islam, according to reality, according to truth, that we fast. Yeah, and we fast for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because he commanded us to. So this is a very important thing. Now moving to linguistics of taqwa, many people tell you that it comes from the verb uh, originally waqa, yaqi, wiqaya, and other v- verbs you use, ittaqa, yattaqi, fahuwa, muttaqi. These all come from the verb of having protection, having, seeking protection, because that's what taqwa is, that we need to seek protection, okay, after having iman. But think about it like this, that are we seeking taqwa without connecting it to iman? Is our taqwa connected to iman? It would be argued, uh, it's an interesting thing, a category, uh, interesting category issue here, that actually the first act of taqwa is if we say that taqwa is following all the awamir and commandments of Allah, then the first commandment would be what? To believe. Yeah, that the first act of taqwa is to believe, to, to be a mu'min billah, to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. هُدَى لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَا مِنْفِقُونَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ إِلَىٰ آخِرِهِ Notice, that the sign of a muttaqi is the one who believes in the that which he cannot see. That he believes that the best explanation of the observed world is from the world that is unseen. And the, where did we get that information from the unseen? Alladheena yu'minuna bil ghaib. We, from the unseen, actually is alladheena yu'minuna bil kitab. That we are the people who believe in the revelation. That from the unseen world to the observed world that we will live in, the surface level of existence, the surface level of reality, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent from that place, from that uh, unseen world to the seen world revelation to tell us of otherwise how would we know about angels? How would we know about jinns? How would we know about Jannah? How would we know about Jahannam? How would we know about the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Other than knowing He's the creator via understanding the creation, how would we know He's a Rahman? How we would know He's a Rah you know Rah a Rahim, a Latif. You know, how would we know He's any of these a Rafiq? How do we know these things about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unless He sent revelation to the this world to us? So this is so important that the first act of, act of taqwa is to believe. I would argue that in some time, uh, places in our community, in some areas in our, in our thinking, we have lost the philosophy and reality of Islam when, when uh, in relation to taqwa. So prayer becomes not really a process where we're trying to understand what was recited in taraweeh that night, even through translation or by studying Arabic, you know, or, and, or by having learned Arabic, having khashu, you know, many Arabs. I know Arabs, you know, they'll tell you. Even, you can, even if you know Arabic, you will not have khushu. You will still think about your shopping in taraweeh, even if you know Arabic. So khushu is necessary even if you have Arabic. Because if you're not thinking about the verses, you're not thinking about the verses, right? <laughs> even if you know the language. And so therefore, we need to make sure that the prayer in taraweeh, for example, that we're not just going through the motions in the month of Ramadan, but we are truly attaining taqwa. That we are not a people who are going through a kind of <laughs> American ninja uh, gladiators 
kind of effort, obstacle course of Ramadan without mindlessly, right? Without knowing actually what am I gaining from this? Sometimes we forget that taqwa is very simply put, is a wiqaya. That it is to protect what is important to you, to secure your interests. You know the word iman comes from amn, amn, yeah? And this is to be secure in something. Yeah, to amina ya'manu to be secure in something. This is one of the root meanings of iman. When you're secure, you seek security in something. You seek security in tying yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as your creator, as your master, as your provider, as your sustainer. Then the next step is to protect that interest. That's what taqwa is. How many Muslims are thinking about protecting their interest? One minute we're talking about having a job. Then the brother gets a job as a teacher and then he thinks, hmm. I need to protect my interests. Maybe I should go into tuition. And then after tuition, he thinks, hmm, what shall I do with that money? I know what I'll do. Usually one person, when he secures his basic needs in life, he thinks, I need to do da'wah, I need to do khidmah, I need to learn the deen, I need to become spiritually liter- literate. No, no, I need to go into a course. No, no, no. I need to protect my interest. So if my interest is dunya, then I will do a job. Then I will do tuition after. You know, because if you have a skill, as the Joker said, if you have a talent, don't ever do it for free. I would argue that if you have a talent, you're good at something, do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not just for money. The higher peak of every action is to do it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet what you have is people who, they get the job, then they get the side hustle. Then with the money they make, they want to do Forex and Bitcoin. The side hustle of the side hustle of the side hustle of the side hustle then where deen ever going to come into our lives? Taqwa, my brothers and sisters, is to secure your interests. It is to secure your interests. What are we doing to secure our iman? What are we doing to secure our love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? To secure ourselves by robing ourselves with the obligations that we owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, look at even a non-Muslim has his own kind of taqwa. Some of you are thinking now, some of you, if you're eating, the food would have come out of your mouth. You think, what's he talking about? Okay, but we're all fasting, mashallah. Taqwa. Yeah, before you spit out the food in your mouth, you know, think. How could a non-Muslim have taqwa? As in, just the meaning of the word in Arabic. That they are securing their interests. They believe life should be lived at its maximum. That human felicity and happiness should be the main goal of every individual. And it's d- defined by every individual. And therefore, everyone should live in a social and economic life in a pursuance of that individual happiness. And it doesn't matter what it is. It, everybody defines it for themselves. The tawheed of the individual, the oneness of the individual. When we believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as a result of that, they build a whole complex life and a lifestyle and a deen around their taqwa of protecting and preserving their beliefs their faith or faithlessness. And this is very natural. I'm not even being critical right now. I'm just saying this is how human beings work, right? I'm just saying, brothers and sisters, that this is how human beings work. And we sometimes, we detach the humanness away from the ibadah, that we don't realize that as a human being, I have one mind, yeah, like a cognitive dissonance. I have one mind for what I really care about. And then there's this religious bit, right? Go and do taraweeh, have the mojito, have the burger, go home, right? And then after Eid, we don't know what happens. Because we have forgotten that the month of Ramadan is the month of Qur'an. Yeah? Shahru Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. That the month of Ramadan is special because the Qur'an came in it. Not the Qur'an is special because of Ramadan, that the month is called Ramadan, but the month of Ramadan is blessed and honored, the time itself is blessed. Because it is the time in which unzila fihil Qur'an. And yet the Qur'an seems to be the first victim here. That many of us are not putting enough time into studying the Qur'an. And why do we study the Qur'an? Why do we recite the Qur'an? We recite the Qur'an to know the awamir, the commands, and the nawahi, and the prohibitions, so that we can do ta'a, so that we can have obedience, so that we can have taqwa. And we're missing out on that. You know, a man came up to Hassan al-Basri, the second generation tabi'i, uh, second generation Muslim Tabi'i from the students of the the Salaf, the, the, the Sahaba with Wanullahi alayhim. And Hassan al Basri, a man came up to him, you know, this Qurra from the Qari, from the Qurra, special reciter. And he said, He said, Qaratul Quran, 
You know, he said, Qara'atu al-Qur'an. Ma asqattu harfan. You know, I recited the Qur'an and I never dropped a letter. Meaning I've memorized it. And mashallah, bitartil, you know, with the maqamat and very nice recitation. He says, Qara'atu al-Qur'an. Wa ma asqattu harfan. I have not dropped a letter. And Hassan al-Basri who turned to him and he said, Laqad asqatta kullaha. He said, rather you have dropped all of the letters of the Qur'an. All of them have fallen on the floor. How so? Because you did not command what Allah had obliged on yourself and the people around you and your family and your community. And you did not forbid on yourself what Allah, what you recited. You have not prohibited that which Allah had prohibited. And therefore the implementation is a component of taqwa and not just recitation of the Qur'an. Subhanallah. So hifth is important. But hifth is one third of a hafiz, what we need to do also is understand, faham, and then after that, tatbiq, implementation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us to implement it. So, taqwa is also, comes at a time when verses were ca- came in relation to uh, uh, compensation. Uh, in the, the, if you look at the context within Surah Al-Baqarah, they came in a context of many other obligations that were both to do with the public life and to do with even warfare at the time when Muslims had a nation and a leader and an imam. And, you know, and then fasting was discussed. And this should already show that when we say, Kutiba alaykum, Kutiba alaykum, Kutiba alaykum in the Quran, when it's repeated with many obligations, that it shows that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed as that, is that fasting is an internal change. But also the expectation is so that we can see an external change as well. That we, this change is also applied in our public life. So what are we doing to protect our interests in the public life? This is an act of piety. This is also an act of taqwa. We should also avoid, brothers and sisters, inconsistent and fake taqwa. Okay, so first I've talked about one of the the flaws of individualistic taqwa, which is not taqwa. Now we're going to talk about inconsistent taqwa. Yeah, so... One of the inconsistencies we see in taqwa is when we see certain strange things in Ramadan that don't happen even outside of Ramadan, like overeating. What is the point of reducing one form of consumption and increasing another? That people are more f- messing around on the internet, scrolling, eating more, gaming more. That we're replacing one addiction with another. To replace hunger with glutton. To re- replace hunger with sloth. You know, to replace even hunger with overeating. You know, Umar ibn al-Khattab, he says, he says, uh, al-batna tudhibul fitna. He says, overeating harms discernment, the ability to think properly. Yeah? And subhanallah, there's a lot of overeating and there's a lot of underthinking, right? A lot of this that we need to work on. So we need to make sure that we don't have uh, inconsistent taqwa. The taqwa isn't just when we're standing for 20 raka'at, but we're standing for all of the red lines of this ummah, whether it's sitting with oppressors, whether it is speaking the haq, whether it is standing for the oppressed. All of these are acts of taqwa. Notice the sahaba's Ramadan of the month of taqwa and our month of Ramadan, a month of taqwa. Their month of Ramadan, it was, they did not put down their swords in Ramadan. They did not put down their pens they did not put down speaking the truth. That's actually the time when they upheld all of the obligations. Now we as Muslims, we are in the time, just to make it clear, that we are in the time of da'wah. We are in the age of da'wah, propagation, apologetics, interfaith discourse, correct interfaith discourse rather. And carrying Islam, enjoining good what is forbidding evil, not violence. But at the same time we must understand, we must understand that this was the month of actually engaging and working hard for the ummah as well as fasting and praying but it seems to be now that we forget our relationships with how we treat our family and our children while we're fasting and then we are praying and crying on the 27th night we need to make sure that we should still cry on the 27th night cry your eyes out but make sure that we are consistent in the way that we treat the ones that we love the ones we are responsible for primarily our families but also our ummah is narrated in a hadith it has some da'af in it but the scholar said that the meaning is sound 
So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "كل رجل من المسلمين على ثغرة من ثغر الإسلام الله لا يؤت الإسلام لا يؤت الإسلام من قبلك." Every man, every person from the Muslims is protecting a breach from the breaches of Islam. That the Colosseum has 1.8 billion doors, gates that could be attacked by the enemy. And he's saying that all of us, that we are guarding each thaghra min thaghar al-Islam. Allah, he says, by Allah, la yutal Islam min qibalik. May Islam not be invaded by your direction. Islam could be invaded by your direction, by you, how you allow your children to misbehave and misunderstand Islam in the month of Ramadan. That you let the enemy in through your children. You let the enemy in through your community work, your lack thereof. You let the enemy in because of your lack of da'wah. We are letting the... And you know what? You can say, forget everyone else, just forget and just concentrate on my family. وَيَصْلَى سَعِيرًا إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that they burn ignitedly for indeed إِنَّهُ كَانَ فِي أَهْلِهِ مَسْرُورًا It's because all they cared about was sitting in familial bliss. Ignore what goes on in society and the community and on your doorstep brothers and your neighbours then the flood will seep through your, underneath your uh, door, your front door eventually. Be, be careful of that. But we shouldn't do it because it will harm you. You should do it because of taqwa. You should do it because you know that you have a duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be more than just the musalli and the sa'in, but also to be the da'i and to be the amir of the ma'roof and the nahi of the munkar. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, Ibn al jawzi he mentions a beautiful, exa- beautiful example in the story of Yusuf alayhi salam about this inconsistency in taqwa, in piety. He mentions that um, Yusuf alayhi salam's brothers, right, they're going into Egypt. And at that time, Yusuf alayhi salam has already become the, the lead, like an aziz, and he's in charge of the storehouses, right, of grain. And they've come, the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam to Egypt. They've come with their camels and they've come to get their allotment, their share. And when they were seen by uh, the staff, yeah, the, the people who were, um, I think, giving out the, 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 what was harvested, the portions, okay, when they were giving it out, they so had some doubt about the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam. And those, they said to him, أيتها العير إنكم لسارقون O men of the caravans You are indeed thieves Ibn al-Jawzi He says in his Sayyid al-Khatir He says that in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, that The brothers said قَالُوا تَاللَّهِ لَقَدْ عَلِمْتُمْ مَا جِئْنَا لِنُفْسِدَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمَا كُنَّا سَارِقِينَ That indeed the, the, the brothers of Yusuf said Wallahi, you know, by Allah, indeed, you already know that we never came to bring about any oppression or harm in the earth. وَمَا كُنَّا سَارِقِينَ And we are no kind of thieves. We are no thieves at all. Now the commentary Ibn al-Jawzi says about this, um, about this uh, ayah is that it was, it was mentioned that the brothers of Yusuf salam were so fastidious such muttaqis, so pious, that they would put muzzles on their camels' mouths. They would put muzzles on their mouths so that they could no longer, they could, they could not eat from the pastures in Misr because that was land that did not belong to them. So the brothers of Yusuf salam were saying, how dare you, you know, say to us that we are potential thieves or that we come across as thieves, as impious as thieves. When we are people who muzzle our ca- camels so they don't even eat from your grass. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. That they're so careful, the wara, that they are so careful that they make sure that their camels do not even eat grass that does not belong to them. And this is the excessive oaths that they're making. Tallahi. Yeah. Laqad alimtum. You already know. Look at the excessiveness in their piety. When actually. They were afraid, Ibn al-Qayyim, uh, sorry, Ibn al-Jawzi, he says. He says they were showing how careful they are and pious they are in their camels not having a bite, a bite of the pastures that don't belong to them, while they themselves threw their brother down the well, who was subsequently sold for less than a luqma. He was sold for the price of a mouthful of food. He was sold for next to nothing. Subhanallah. 
that they threw their brother down the well, what act of taqwa was this? Where was the taqwa there? And many of us sometimes we're throwing a family member down the well. Some of us will be praying in the masjid, mashallah, and then we are abusive to our spouses. Where is the taqwa in that? Wallahi, where is the taqwa in that? This is inconsistent taqwa like the brothers of Yusuf alayhi salam who were showing off their piety about how they would never, you know, these thieves, but yet they threw their brother down the well and he was sold for less than a price of a mouthful. And so we got to make sure that our relationships also factor in the taqwa. The taqwa impacts our relationships. This community, has it thrown the ummah down the well in Kashmir, in Palestine? Has it thrown humanity down the well in Ukraine? As in, do we have a concern for our fellow man, for our brothers and sisters in Islam, for our brothers and sisters in humanity about injustices that take place? Or are we too happy? Are we so happy and so positive that we're going to sit there and enjoy you know, iman boosters, life support machine dawah? Yeah, is this really taqwa? And then sit with the people who are our oppressors? We need to be very, very careful about what taqwa, taqwa is. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and you cannot say, I would not do a bad thing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ هُوَ أَعْلَمُ بِمَنِ التَّقَى That actually, فَلَا تُزَكُّوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't claim goodness and purity for yourself. For indeed, Allah is knowledgeable. And He is the one who knows who is the one who preserves himself. As in, the one who protects himself. The one who has also taqwa. So Ibn al jawzi he warns about inconsistent taqwa. Notice in the Quran that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses so many uh, things. He discusses in the same ayah about fasting, he addresses the penalties of murder, the verses on inheritance. He mentions um, fighting, as I've mentioned, in that context, in that time. And yet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing us a unison, a congruity, that fasting and uh, uh, should also manifest as a part of our social conformity, that this is something that we should have taqwa in all aspects. Fasting is to build taqwa in all aspects of your life. Fasting is not to build taqwa in taraweeh alone. Fasting is to build taqwa in all aspects of life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala indicates to us in these verses that I've mentioned a combination of what is personal with what is social, that we must develop ourselves and we must develop our societies together. I pray we increase in da'wah and khidmah going forward after Ramadan because we are missing a large part of our religion and therefore our full appreciation of taqwa. Taqwa also leads to resolve, yeah, to have sabr. And we need to make sure that when we have taqwa, we are people who are genuinely striving for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I mentioned before, but also making sure that this taqwa is we're building the reserves. Where do you get this reserve from then? Ah, this is the salah. Raw, you know, the verb, rawaha you rawihu tarweeh. Oh, you know, then it's taraweeh. It comes from the verb istirah, it comes from the verb to rest. That taraweeh is to rest between four rakah. And that the whole prayer itself is actually a means of spiritual succor and rest from the struggle for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Bilal, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa would say, Arihna biha, O Bilal, give us, you know, a relaxation, give us release, give us relief. And spiritual succor is like a fat horse with small legs untrained horse the same the opposite would be a horse that is being run to its last to its until it's become purely just bone and just bone and sinew and muscle that the horse has no more energy left it's run itself to the ground it's glue it's become it's become it's gone into the glue factory we need to make sure that the the spiritual strength we gain is through ibadah ya bilal o bilal arihna biha don't give us relief from salah by getting it over and done with. Dropping some rakats, doing some headbutts on the ground. Let's drop some rakats. Let's get it short. Let's get it done. Let's smack it out. Yeah, You know, let's just drop some. Don't drop some. This is the time to actually build the spiritual sucker 
to develop and cultivate the ravines and the rivers and the forests you know and the mountains that are moving inside your own heart there's a whole world inside your heart that needs to be developed so that you can have what it takes to do all the things that I've been talking to you about in terms of the dawah and this is what should build heroism that there should be heroism isn't a fake hero but a proper hero someone who is developing his heart and he's also developing his society his community you know mutanabbi the famous poet he says idha alqawm qalu man fatan khiltu annani unit falam aksal wa lam atabaddali such a beautiful poem he says when the people are being attacked and they're being invaded the people cry out qalu man fatan who's going to save us you know what mutanabbi says he's a sick bro mutanabbi says khiltu annani unit he goes i i thought it was me they were talking about <laughs> they said who is the hero for the of the hour he's like oh you called i'm here it's <laughs> well the bravery in arabic poetry he says khiltu annani unit i th- i think it was me that what they were asking for so when the umma has a need whether it's to uh give iftar out in the masjid or to give dawah or to put out a stall where is everybody where is the help where are the believers we talk about the power of dua and the superstar dua, dua and the power of dua in month of ramadan when are we going to become the answer to people's dua we have a responsibility as people of taqwa to not just be making the dua and giving people making dua for others but where is the effort of the muttaqi to be the answer to people's dua to be the answer to people's prayers to have khidma and da'wa in the community this where is this taqwa if people for taqwa in the past was just praying 20 rak'at much of islam would not meet it reach south asia it would not reach hind where all of us became muslim because they would be too busy praying on marble floors so mutanabbi he says falam aksal no did i slump and, and go oh, i can't make it kind of like sometimes we slump just before wanting to go tarawih and we're eating too much tara- you know uh, iftar right <laughs> he said i don't slump walam atabaddali and no did i see is the replacement for me you know nowadays if you ask people to do khidma they say oh uh, ask someone else maybe he's free if you say who would like to take this business opportunity oh then we're there for that side hustle and the side hustle and the side side hustle right we're there for that who's in there for the habibi coin and the bitcoin or whatever it is but yet we're not there when the call to islam when islam call allah calls to us that we are it's we are needed to stand up and call to the truth and speak against oppression for our brothers and sisters in kashmir and in palestine and all across the world in iraq and afghanistan and everywhere and yet at that time our piety does not lead us to speak notice that in one of the tafsirs it was mentioned that there was a man and this man prayed to allah day and night and allah sent the angels to destroy that nation and the angels came back to allah and they said there is a man who worships you day and night and then he is narrated that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said destroy that nation on him for indeed his face did not become red his face did not redden for the oppression that happens within his society and his surroundings and for that reason we should falam aksal wa lam atabaddali we should not slump we not we should not slump and be lazy nor should we seek a replacement that oh don't worry someone out there is doing it someone out there is getting it done but you're not doing it how are you going to save yourself if you said what are you going to do about uh, increasing fees uh, increasing bills electricity bills someone out there is making an effort to earn more so they can pay their bills you wouldn't say that you'd be like what can i do to reduce my bills or earn more to be able to pay, pay for increasing energy prices because you would take that problem as personal and a muttaqi takes the commands of allah personally so this is very very important the last thing i will say is that you know we talk a lot about the moon and moon sightings maybe a bit moon crazy sometimes what country who when when what do you follow what calculation do you follow but we forget that subhanallah one of the things that we observe the most is the moon like you know one of the things we're looking out for ru'yatu is the the moon and we look for the crescent and yet how many fasts have gone by and we haven't even contemplated that the moon is also a sign that the moon is also a sign for the believer a sign of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you look at the moon and what have you thought when ramadan begins and ramadan ends is that it 
that ra- we've we've made Ramadan a month of celebration, and Eid is the thirty first day of celebration. We'd made we did made it the month where we s- celebrate everything other than the Quran. We make it the month of personalized taqwa and not also social taqwa. That we make it about individualistic taqwa and not about our relationships and how we treat our families and our wives and our children. And yet we look at the moon and we don't think anything. Ibn al Jawzi he says he mentions a poem, a very beautiful poem. And I want to share it before iftar starts, right? He says, "Wal maru mithlu hilal in hina tu bisiruhu, or talatihi." In another uh, narration, "Yabdu da'ifan da'ilan thumma yatasiq, yazdadu hatta ida ma tama aqabahu kuru al jadidain naqsan thumma yanhamku, yeah, yanhamku." He says, "Man, indeed, human being." Is like a crescent. At its beginning, it starts small and gentle. The crescent moon is a slender, small, delicate child, then grows even and and to the point where it becomes full. When does a when does a, the moon become very full? Like it, it has some fat on it, you know? Is when it becomes a half moon, and then when it reaches forty, it becomes its peak. It becomes forty. It becomes a full moon. Until then, what happens? It starts to decline, and it starts to become a half moon, and then back to a very slender, very delicate, very weak, and very dependent person. And Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Nukat nuna kishu fil amr." But Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says that when we create anything, even human beings, we reverse them in age, meaning that the way we grew, we grow physically strong, mentally strong. And all of these things, and when we get older, we become physically weak. We have elderly people in what is equivalent to nappies, right? They cannot even walk. They become like toddlers. That we need to be gentle with them. They say things and they cry out, and we need to think that they're like children. That when we say are elderly and they complain, we should feel that they're like children who are complaining, and we should be having mercy on them and not think, oh, they're like this and they're vindictive and all of. Th-. They're not. They're too old to be vindictive. They are people who are old who are suffering in their pain. And they can be, become embittered, like a child who is embittered that he cannot bring the milk to himself and clean himself when he soiled himself, and therefore we go to them. And so this, just when we see the moon, we see the stages of our lives. That we see that we are slender and small, and we become full and strong, fourteen-year-old, fifteen, sixteen-year-olds, and then we become forty-year-old. We become full and in every way, mentally and physically, and even financially. You know, people are very strong, wealth in terms of their wealth by that time. And then we start to slowly break down, and the moon becomes a crescent again. And Subhanallah, this is a sign for us of the resurrection. And sometimes that resurrection could be abrupt. That's why the poem, you know, you can extend the meaning to eclipses. Sometimes the moon is eclipsed. Sometimes you could be thirty, and your life will be eclipsed because you will have a appointment, and you'll be called for that fateful second appointment. How many of you listening have had that second appointment? Scary, huh? When you get called back, because it might be, it might be the C word, it might be terminal, it might be cancer, subhanallah, and then you get called back, and then you know that your whole life could be eclipsed by a car accident on Eid day. Your whole life could be eclipsed by an illness that could say that your twenty years expectation is now only a year. So subhanallah, the moon is also a sign for us of our resurrection. That just as a crescent would seem like a full moon would never come, but it does, and a full moon so strong, piercing its light through the sky, seems like it will never go, but it does. That we will also one day not be here, and that a muttaqi is a person who, who akthir dikra hadhim al ladhat, who remembers often, yeah, the destroyer of, of all pleasures and that which is death. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala. Give us taqwa in this month of Ramadan that is is personal and social. May Allah subhanahu wa taala grant us taqwa that helps not only in our ibadah but also in the way we buy and sell, in our muamalat, in our transactions, in our marriages, in the way we raise our children. Taqwa is something so in, all encompassing. Some of us we are we don't we are fasting and thinking fasting is just not eating. Fasting is not eat, not just eat the process of not eating, because if you get soil, uh, just as fasting is not the process of non eating, uh, eating is not the process of just swallowing and chewing. Because if you get soil and you put it as Maulana Maududi says, and you chew it and it, you swallow it, 
you have not achieved the task of eating when it's with soil. Similarly, not eating is not the act, is fasting. Fasting is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala watching you. And then you have taqwa. That is really the taqwa. Taqwa is the consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The fear of going anywhere near his anger and his subsequent punishments. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all taqwa in this month of Ramadan. A complete taqwa, a comprehensive uh, taqwa. And not make sure that you we understand the purpose of taraweeh. That the taraweeh is now not just I go there, I do my 20 rakat like an obstacle course. But I actually do that to build my spiritual reserves for my khidmah, for my da'wah. Okay, I, I only emphasize these things maybe because it may not have been emphasized as much. I don't know, I haven't listened to all the shows. But I wanted to make sure that we really, really contextualize the importance of taqwa in the time when Allah revealed these verses. All right? And I've given you the context now of taqwa, of the, uh, of the, ver- of, of the verse of Ramadan. Kutiba alaykum usiyam kama kutiba ala ladina min qablikum. Why min qablikum? Because the people who came before, some of the, reli- uh, b- the people of the book before, they actually moved, uh, in uh, Imam al-Tabari in his tafsir, he mentions that the people, they moved fasting from the summer days to the spring days so they could make their fast easier. And this is what happens when you gut out the true meaning of taqwa from the fasting. And all we have achieved is hunger. So, really, sit with your family right now. You don't have to listen to this per se. But sit with your family. I advise what I do with my family is we all sit at the table and everyone recites a few surahs. Recite some Qur'an, right? Just before you break your fast. And then make dua together as a family. And also make your dua in Arabic and English. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let's all make dua yeah, in Arabic and English. رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِلْنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُنَّا مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يرجع السلام هينا ربنا بالسلام وادخلنا دار السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم أنت السلام ومنك السلام وإليك يرجع السلام هينا ربنا بالسلام وادخلنا دار السلام تباركت ربنا وتعاليت يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عنا اللهم إنك عفو تحب العفو فعفو عنا ربنا أفرغ علينا صبرا وثبت قدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار اللهم إنك عفو تحب الأفوى فعفو عنا يا رب العالمين forgive us for our sins يا رب العالمين that if we are to die make us die on nothing other than al-iman يا رب العالمين يا غفور الرحيم يا أرحم الراحمين if we are to live make us live on none other than other than the deen of Islam Ya Rabbal Alameen, help all of those Muslims all across the world who have no food to eat, who have no shelter, who have no clothes, who have no parents to comfort them, who have no safety, who wake up every day and every day is like a fast. Every single day is a challenge. Ya Rabbal Alameen, forgive us for our negligences. Forgive us for that which we do not do. Forgive us for the times that we have had cowardice. Forgive us, Ya Allah, and grant us bravery. Ya Rabbal Alameen, grant us bravery. Because, Ya Allah, if we do not have bravery, we will suffer the greater pain of humiliation, the greater pain of humiliation, of cowardice in this life and punishment in the next. Ya Rabbal Alameen, forgive us for our sins. Guide us to the right path of Islam and keep us firm upon it. Give us strength in body and mind. Ya Rabbal Alameen, Ya Ghafoor Rahim, Ya Rabbal Mustada'afeen, Wa Anta Rabbuna. Ya Allah, you are the Lord of the weak and you are our Lord too. Ya Allah, forgive us and give us strength and make us People who, when you look upon us, that you are pleased. That you see the followers of your Prophet, your beloved Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. People who deserve to drink from Al-Kawthar by the hand of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa from his sister. Ya Rabbal Alameen, guide us to the right path of Islam. Give us knowledge in the deen. Ya Allah, help us learn and memorize the Quran and am- apply and implement it. Ya Allah, guide us and give us the tawfiq to learn Arabic and understand Arabic. Ya Allah, help our families and help this Ummah jami'an. Ya Rabbal Alameen. Ya Allah, open us our, our hearts in this month of Ramadan. Ya Allah, guide us to understand that to have taqwa is to be a people of reflection and a people of compassion. A people whose reflection leads to compassion 
and a people whose compassion leads to reflection. He who cares about the ummah will start learning about the deen. And he who learns about the deen will start caring about the ummah because we are an ummah of compassion and we are an ummah of reflection. Ya Rabbal Alameen, guide all of our families. Make harmony between our husbands and our wives. Make harmony between our children and our parents. Rabbi rahamhum ala kama rabbana saghara. Rabbi rahamhum kama rabbana saghara. Jazakum Allah khair for listening.